everybody and welcome to HTC Invitational. I'm your host Nimsh and I'm joined here by Monk who will be my co-host for today. Monk, how are you, man? I'm great, Marcin. Uh, Nimsh, it's going to be a great day because we have such a great tournament lined up for you guys. 16 of the best tor- uh, players in the world all together competing in this great tournament sponsored by HTC. Sponsored by a great company, I would say, that makes such great phones, such great tablets. But I'm sure you'll be hearing more about them throughout the day. Oh, yeah, obviously. And um, they are the main sponsor of the tournament. The tournament will have a $5,000 prize pool. The winner is going away with $2,500. Uh, um, that's that's a lot, you know, for two days of, of playing card games. Yeah. Like, who would thought in this day and age that we'd be, we would be able to play card games on our phones and tablets and we'd be able to make so much money off of them? That's really crazy. And um, our players will have, as you mentioned, 16 best players in the world. They will be playing um, in a Conquest format. That's a a Blizzard format. The best of fives, uh, right now you can see the bracket. Those are our guys. Nyria versus Forsen is going up next. Um, And then uh, we might uh, mix up the matches a bit, but the bracket will be as you can see now. So Ecop Tice, Tides versus Zalai, Strife Crow versus Dog, Colenso Farbat, Savitz Hyped, Show RDU, Trump, Chucky. Um, Monk, are you excited for this bracket? Like, there is a lot of intense matches in in front of us. Oh, definitely. Like, if you were just looking at the bracket, you would notice that half of the players, uh, 8 out of 16, were sponsored by HTC. They're either from Team Cloud9, Team uh, uh, TSM, or from Team Liquid. So, half of them will be playing for HTC, and the other half will uh, be kind of be playing against the the quote-unquote HCC home team. So I think it's a really great storyline. How many players from the HCC team can take their matches? Will it be four? Will it be five? Will it be three? Um, or will they go 8-0 or 0-8? What are the predictions? Because I know we run a poll and uh, people actually voted to see uh, what's going to happen. So what are the predictions from the community? Well, to be fair, uh, in the poll, I think most people voted either 8-0 or 0-8. But I don't think that's quite too realistic. It's just that uh, a lot of people in the community like to say, oh, 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 08 boys, for example. All right. Um, Well, we are saying that because it's actually a single elimination bracket. So every match we're going to show you guys till tomorrow is going to be an elimination elimination match. But our players are ready. Nairia versus Forsen can already see game number one in HTC Invitational. Oh, wow. What a brilliant game. We're going to start off with, uh, it's going to be obviously uh, a patron warrior uh, against a mage. And I believe that mage is from Forsen and uh, Nairia will be playing the patron warrior. All right, so let's talk about the classes first. Uh, Forsen is running mage, shaman, and warlock. And Nairia is running druid, warlock, and warrior. Uh, Who do you think has an edge here? Because it is conquest and every deck has to get at least one win. Well, judging from the lineups, um, there's going to be Mage, Shaman, and Forsen, uh, and Warlock from Forsen. And what that leads me to believe is that the only reason you would play Ma- uh, Shaman is if you're playing Mech Shaman. And if you're playing Mech Shaman, you're very likely to also bring Mage, Mech Mage, and Zoo to the format. So we could be seeing um, a lineup that's specifically targeted against Druid. Of course, Mech Mage, Mech Shaman, and Zoo are three of the best decks against Druid. And because Nerea is pl- running Druid in this lineup, he may be in a bit of turn. All right, that's a, a valid assumption. So for Nerea, he is running that warrior deck. Um, what is, all right, so this is the green patron deck. We see the red courser, uh, because you know that f- fireworks can be anything at, at, at this point. Um, can you tell us more about the Green Patron deck? Like, this is uh, one of the most powerful decks right now, but maybe not all of our viewers are actually aware how this deck works like. Yeah, well, first of all, uh, we apologize for not being able to see Naria's hand. Unfortunately, there's, uh, at least for this game, there seems to be kind of a spectator mode bug. But uh, we're, we're going to just kind of be commenting it from Forsen's angle. Uh, he's pretty much playing a ladder game at this moment. And I'm not sure if he's too happy with what's happening right now because uh, the Patron Warrior has the board and it'll be really hard for Forsen to take it back. But yeah, as for the Grim Patron Warrior, it's pretty much like the hottest deck right now. And it's a deck that relies on so many combos and especially the Grim new Grim Patron card that allows it to just fill up the board um, that gives it, this deck so many win conditions. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, I, at least like 80% of the players at this tournament uh, either brought Grim Patron Warrior or Control Warrior in order to counter Grim Patron Warrior. 
Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Um, this deck is also great versus aggro decks. And uh, as we can see, Forsen is running Mech Mage, which is an aggro deck. The problem that Mech Mage has with this deck is that there is not really a good way to remove the board when uh, the said Green Patron enters and uh, copies itself. And also, uh, a lot of minions here have uh, two attack, and Green Patron can just attack into them and multiply. So um, if Mech Mage is not able to snowball and deal enough damage to Warrior, then it is really in trouble. And right now, Forsen is in trouble already. Yeah, just so many tempo cards from Nebria, and even though he is resting on two cards in his hand right now, because he has the board, I would probably put him in the advantage. Um, there's just uh, so many options to draw cards from the Grim Patron Warrior. For example, like a, a Whirlwind plus Battle Rage would be just really excellent. And we even see Slam for Nebria, a card that's not too common in Grim Patron Warrior, but it's still definitely very viable as kind of like a cycle card. Oh, there, there we have the Whirlwind again, and judging from this play, we might even see uh, a Battle Rage here drawing even more cards. Oh, oh a Flame Tomb Totem for Force, and not really a happy ending for the Pirate of Shredder. Yeah, quite unfortunate. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be a little slow from Nyria. He, uh, he drew one card from the Accolade, but he isn't going to get uh, any more. So at this point, Forsen just might be able to kind of just outvalue their patron warrior at this point even though he uh he himself is running low on cards as well but oh wow what a great play uh throwing a cruel taskmaster in oh yeah and definitely just this yeah, is also it... important because if there will be like um there is a couple of cards that Zanaria could use uh to counter mirror entity but definitely green patron is not one of them you don't want to give uh, your opponent a green patron to copy it especially a mage that can use um his hero power to multiply the patrons yeah, and we can see that Rhea, he's like shaking his head a lot because he's probably very unhappy with the draws that he's got. But Emperor Thorazan on turn 7, it's certainly no Dr. Boom, but I think Naria will take it, especially because he has 5 cards in his hand right now. Maybe that's why he was shaking his uh, his head so much. Um, having Torison in his hand before, he was thinking like, yeah, I want those combo parts because I want to get them cheaper. But maybe his hand is full of uh, reactive cards like Executes, uh, maybe Second Slam. Like cards you don't really feel you need to copy. Oh, what a great blast mage. I think that was that pretty much went perfectly for Forsen. Every hit needed to go exactly uh where it went. And he neither needed one to the Emperor or four to the Emperor, and, and he would have been fine with either. So what can Nyria do right now? Um there is some kind of board. Force in hand is like luster, like there is not much. There is the frostbolt, which is uh, obviously great versus green patrons. If there is one patron, but if, if patron can multiply and there is a whirlwind here, um, I wonder if Forsen is able to stop this board. Yeah, it, it's going to depend on whether Nebria also has a follow up, even though he has no mana left. There's always the possibility of one mana spell is being reduced by Emperor, but unfortunately, that isn't going to happen for him right now. And Forsen, at this point, he'll have to go on the defensive and kill off all these. Uh, Grim patrons before they multiply because they represent a huge stud for him currently. Yeah, but it won't be a problem with this board. Uh, he should be able to clear easily and then just uh, start getting an advantage. Uh, it's important also that normally the war, war deck is not running any any brawl. So if Forsen is able to stabilize, like clear the board right now, stabilize and start pushing for damage, it might be difficult for Naria to come back. Uh, he used double whirlwind already. He used um, this is the second acolyte. So he still has some cards to draw, but um, with one green patron used as well, it might be tough to to clear uh, without brawl as well. Yeah, uh, we might actually be seeing somewhat of a sequencing error for Force in this turn. I think he's considering killing off the armor smith now, but he definitely should have done so before um, killing off the first green patron. I think he just got excited that he has this uh, frostbolt for green patrons. Like, yeah, I can remove this right now without any problems. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, you want to get rid of patrons as soon as possible, so it was definitely the play to kill it off with the Frostbolt, but maybe just Forsen got a little bit too excited, I guess. Yeah, and look now, at his face, he's so excited right now. <laughs> definitely, uh, the, the the excitement is just tantalizing for him. And look at this mage, he, he played Ice Barrier, because now he has 7 armor. Yeah, it looks like that. So for people who are joining us right now, this was not a nice barrier, and this is not a, a mix-up freeze mage, mech mage. Uh, by the way, this is the moment where mech mage has a lot of advantage. Um, if he just pushes the board, 
Um, Warrior doesn't really have that many comeback mechanisms. Like, um, there, are, there are no shield blocks, no bro, I believe, unless Nairia is running a tech bro. Um, sludge Belchers, like some green patrons do play Sludge Belchers, but not all of them. It's not a common card, let's say. I wonder which 4-drop is Nairia running. Um, well, for sure Death Spite, but I was mostly thinking about Pilot to Shredder or maybe Numbish Inventor. Yeah, and like some decks don't even run that many 4-drops. And uh, like, I guess Pilot Shredder is kind of a tech against... Uh, it's just a very solid all-around 4-cost minion. Oh man, Dr. Boom, here we oh, go. That was the card he needed right now. I wanted to say that Dr. Boom is something he definitely needs. Uh, if you would get like a Mech Warper, he would start getting behind. But with Dr. Boom, he just continues to pressure Nairia. Yeah, fortunately for Nairia though, he has at least a decent answer to these Boom Bots with the Death Spite equipped. Um, he's already used two Whirlwinds, so um, without this Death Spite with one charge left, Nairia would have been in somewhat of a precarious position. Oh, oh, he has Gromash. So he can trade with Boom if he wants to. Unless Gromash dies to, to double bombs. Oh, no. Is it Wait, is it double... Okay. Okay, okay. Oh, so yeah, Nairia just a bit of a sequencing... He kind of replays Forsen um, for that sequencing error because he made a sequencing error himself. So basically, Nairia is just giving back that one armor to Forsen. And uh, bo both hands are looking kind of anemic right now, but if Orson draws the Archmage Antinatus from the top, he's going to be in a pretty huge lead with the Finicule Clofield. If there is a Green Patron and a Warsong um, Commander for Nyria, then that would be amazing, right? Like getting the Warsong and, um, and just spawning the board with Green Patrons. Yeah, this is... But... Oh, well, <laughs> wow. it's kind of a bottom deck at this point. Like, Forsen can't even play this. Yeah, but then there is the important to mention that Forsen is getting Nairia lower and lower, and he has the the finicky, uh, the finicky. So, uh, if he gets Antonidas, he's going to stealth it and uh, just get a lot of fireballs. Yeah, but as right now, Nairia pretty much needs to put Forsen on a clock. He has to say pretty much like, okay, I have to win in the next two or three turns because if I let Forsen draw into this Archmage Antonidas, then he'll be able to put me on a clock. Yeah, but this turn for Nairia was amazing. Just getting those patrons alive. Uh, also, the um, Frauding Berserker. Forsen getting Med Scientist is not really doing much. He used both of his secrets. Those decks like Mech Mages are only, only running double mirror entity. Yeah, unless he teched in a counter spell, which I find probably unlikely for Forsen. Then this Bad Scientist is just going to be a completely dead draw. It's going to be a vanilla 2 2 because both mirror entities have been used already. It's even and, worse. Like, because yeah. it has two attacks, so you can actually multiply the Green Patron. Exactly. Not only does it multiply the Green Patron, but it also buffs the Frothing Berserker. So, like, I guess, like, most of Forsen's deck is just completely unplayable right now. Like, Mech Warpers are unplayable. Um, Neurotrons are even unplayable. Mad Scientist Snow is Chugger. unplayable. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, this is a really grim situation for Forsen. Pun intended? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Well, but still, you don't concede. Like, even though this looks terrible, uh, if you get a second Frostball in that frauding, if you get Antonidas next turn, can you still win? Antonidas self, pink face, and... Uh, well, it doesn't look good. It definitely doesn't look good. Oh, he's just yeah. trading. He's getting a spare part. He wants a freeze. Stat I swap. Think, I think he's setting up right now in order to get like the biggest Antonidas possible or the best Antonidas possible. Oh, because... Baller Rage. Yeah. Finally, Nairia draws some cards and even Warsong Commander on the field. So he plays Numbish Inventor. Okay, that, that probably means there's less of a chance for Pilot and Shredder in this deck, for example. Yeah, true. Uh, oh. But it means that his deck is more stable this, this way, and Nairia has all the things he wants right now. A Forsen would love to have a Flame Strike, but I would be really surprised to see a Flame Strike in a, in a Mech Mage. Yeah, well, you've seen like Pyroblast in Mech Mages before, but uh, I certainly have never seen a Flame Strike in a Mech Mage. I think I've seen a couple of them uh, at rank 15 okay, while okay. grinding. It, it then it happens sometimes, but uh, in a tournament setting. I don't think I've seen it once. 
Ooh. All right, Switching. so first trying to stay alive with yeah. racing switch. It's no uh, 119 frothing berserker, but I guess this will do. So how much damage is there right now? That's uh, 13 points of damage. Yep, no way to come back from this being forced in. This means no flame strike in the deck. Um, Antonidas wouldn't cut it. Um, he, it will give Forsen a couple of fireballs, but not enough time to survive. So Nairi is going to take game number one, win with his warrior. Yeah, and you know what? I don't think Forsen is too upset. Of course, he would have liked to win that game. But again, it seems like with the lineup that Forsen brought, I definitely expect... Uh, we, we, first of all, we've seen Mech Mage, but I also definitely expect Mech Shaman and Zoo from Forsen's lineup. So there'll be three decks that'll match up really well against the Druid. And I think it'll all just come down to if Nerea can take the game with the Druid. Any game at all. Any and game, um, any game. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, because Druid might have... Tri well, it, it definitely will have Shabble versus Mech Mage, Mech Shaman. And if this is Zoo, it's also not that good versus Druid. But on the other hand, Nerea should be able to, to guess what kind of decks Forsen's bringing. And a bracket was posted before um, the decks were submitted. So maybe Nairia brought uh, Druid with some changes, you know, um, bringing maybe more taunts to deal with this card um, th with the aggression. Maybe he's playing, uh, playing a Mill Druid with um, Tree of Life and a lot of draw. I, I find that uh, less likely, but it's certainly a possibility. And for this game, we're going to be seeing Mech Shaman versus I want to say a headlock but okay this is Maligod yeah this is Maligod uh warlock and it's oh, going to be man. it's just it's just a great deck it's a deck we like really haven't seen too often but it's certainly popping onto the scene lately Mr. Yagoot for example got rank 1 legend with this Maligod deck and Super JJ got rank 2 legend and another european player whose name escapes me also got rank 2 legend so it's certainly a very powerful deck in one of the, probably the, the best dragon deck right now. Oh yeah, I, I certainly agree. So uh, for people who, who are seeing this deck for the first time, I believe the one who designed the original list was Super JJ. And then um, a couple of uh, players picked it up, changed a couple of cards. Basically you do have um, zombie chows, you do have moral codes, you, you do have that anti-aggro early, um, early aggression. And uh, then you do have Maligos, you do have five dragons overall, you have Twilight Drakes, you have uh, other Drakes. You're running... Um, Blackwing Corruptor, the, 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 the new 5-drop 5-4 uh, that deals damage when you have a dragon in your hand. And you do have Soul Fires, you do have a lot of burst with Maligos. You obviously try to get the, uh, the costs of cards uh, reduced by Thorison. And then you play the dragon, Maligos, and you burst your opponent. So, uh, a very interesting build. Yeah, unfortunately that Sunfear Protector dies off, but another one is drawn to replace it. It's, it's kind of funny how that Mech Warper was just like sitting in between the two Anoatrons, being like, hey guys, protect me. But I guess the <laughs> Anoatrons, they didn't do as great of a job as he would have liked. Oh, uh, pretty great play from Forzen here. He gets rid of both shields, but he does play around the Defender of Argus in Nairia's hand right now. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, he knows uh, more or less the build, and uh, Defender of Argus is a staple in those kinds of Warlock decks. But there's a Twilight Drake dropped uh, by Nairia. 4-8 uh, into the Earthshock. Yeah, this is actually quite an interesting variation of the the Dragon Maligod uh, Warlock because we see the Imp Gang Boss instead of Black Wing Technicians. And that's certainly a change that I guess it makes the deck more stable, but at the same time, it weakens the com total potential of the deck. We also saw Shadow Flame in this deck, so definitely a, another card that's probably not too common in this kind of deck. Oh, yeah. Um, but I like the changes. Um... Technician is, is a bit weird and awkward sometimes where you just have to play it without the Dragon Hand. Then it's just, what, a 2-4, a, a, a blank. And here, uh, Imp Gangbos is really similar and a much much better card. But then what what does it say about Technician? Is Technician a bad card then? Because we will we'll have an alternative, just uh, slightly better. For Warlock yeah. at least. Yeah, I guess uh, this is kind of like the Pilot of Shredder versus Fire Guard Destroyer debate. Like, do you just run, like, the really good card, or do you run the card that was given to you uh, as a class card, basically? Yeah. 
All right, so for now, uh, Forsen is, is building up a nice board. Uh, instead of going for face, he's just stabilizing with those max. Uh, he hopes there is no Shadow Flame. There is a Shadow Flame, but there is not really a good target mm, to use it on. And wow. Mr. Uh, Emperor Thorin Stain comes down on the field, and that's certainly going to be exactly what Naria wants. Uh, look at all these free spells in his hand. He has, like, uh, some backstabs. He has some... Uh, Elven it's basically archers, unnerved of. soul fires. This is the um, this is the pre-nerf soul fire, and it's beautiful. Yeah, this healing totem will get a lot of work done. But if Naria can somehow, oh, there's the Palagos. If Naria can somehow get down uh, an Azure Drake plus Shadow Flame on this turn, I think he's yeah, going to be pretty happy. And this is a, a great combination as well because Shadow Flame deals five points of damage. Spell damage is, is buffing um, Shadow Flame. He still has those Soul Fires and Amalgus, so lots and lots of damage. Now, Naria doesn't have a second AoE here. He would really like a Hellfire, for instance, so I think we we might even see a Soul Fire on this Whirling Zapomatic because, he, um, if, because Marcin, I know you were at DreamHack. Uh, the one that's the Stan Sivko one, and you were able yeah. to comment at that great game of Fire Badges winning on turn three with a Whirling Zapomatic. He even had an Earthshock in hand, and he could cast Earthshock on turn three if there would be a taunt. There was no taunt, and he didn't need to cast it, but basically Fire Bad one with Zapomatic. Double Rock Biter on turn three. Um, oh, this is, here we are not going hurt. to see that, but... Okay, what's the minion from the Shredder? It's a 2-2, two -two. that's not really exciting. But it's all right for Forsen. Better than Doomsayer. Oh man, yeah. what do you do with that 8-8? Eight eight? Oh, I guess you cloak it. Yeah, very yeah, nice. Yeah, you do cloak it. I'm, I'm from the Nyria's perspective. A stoved Fell Reaver. This Fell Reaver is in the middle of a field. A big giant guy. And you can't see it. Exactly. Free Mortal Quell. Free Killa Whirling is Appomatic here. And he's able to see the cards uh, that are burned. And oh wow, Ragnaros, that was such a key one to get burned, and Forsen feels it. Naria should also, like, he should be t keeping track of these cards because one Crackle has been burned, and that's also a really nice one. I think Naria's just gonna play as. Yeah, he's lo yet another burn. So many cards are being burned right now, and it's even possible that Naria just, like, mills at his opponent. Second Enough Crackle. Crackle. Yeah, exactly. So there's no direct damage in Forsen's deck right now because typically these decks, they only run. Um, so, oh my god. Every are, are, card is being burned. Yeah, like look at this. Are there any cards? No, he mill him fully on this turn. Fortune has no cards in his hand or deck. Oh my god. I think that's it. There's no way for Fortune to win at this point. He can't get past these taunts. And, oh, Naria is just smiling so much. The combination of Emperor Thorzane plus this Fell Reaver that Fortune played just kind of shut Fortune out of this game. The power of unnerved soul fire. This is why Blizzard nerfed it. And it's even better. You cast it, you deal four damage, it's for zero, and you mill three cards. Look at the power of that card. Yeah, definitely a very exciting game there. Very funny ending, I have to say. Like typically Fell Reaver isn't as punished that much, but when you have so many zero cards, zero mana cost cards in your hand, like I guess you can just like burn twenty of your opponent's cards in a single turn. I would say, like, normally, uh, Phil Reaver is not punished that much, but if you're a Force in, it is. Never lucky. Baby Never Rich. lucky. All That's right, exactly so... exactly what Force would say. Yeah, definitely. So, Naria is uh, having a lead 2-0 to zero versus Force in, and uh, Force in on the verge of elimination from this tournament. If Force in loses the next game, he's out. He's um, zero Force in. Because yeah. we are going to grant him an extra loss. Like, if Force in loses 0-3, we grant him an extra loss, so he is a uh, Force in. Yeah, but you know what? It still is looking kind of alright for Forsen because this is his game plan. He needs to beat the Druid. And it's like all three of his remaining decks are going to have excellent uh, matchups against the Druids. And even with a really great hand from Forsen th this game. Um, but you know what? Oh man, there's the Zombie Chow turn one. So even though it's such a great hand for Forsen, Nevria just might be able to clutch it out. And we see a pretty interesting card, the uh, Faceless, Faceless Manipulator. That's yeah. uh, actually like a tech from uh, Mr. Yagoot. Mr. Yagoot recently, he got rank, uh, or not rank one, but pretty high 
with this kind of druid deck that had a faceless tech in. And with the faceless, you're able to faceless Emperor Thorazanes, for example. Or uh, there's just so many good cards that you can faceless in Wait, the meta so game right now. Are you saying that Mystery Good got first with the Maligod deck, and then he went even further beyond with the faceless druid? Exactly. Just uh, just like a player that's not really recognized as much, but you can definitely tell that everyone respects him because everyone's running his decks right now. I, I definitely expect there to be at least another um, Dragon Warrior or Dragon Warlock in this tournament. And also, we even saw this Faceless Manipulator being run by, I believe, Jab in the in, in deck battles uh, this yeah. week, right? Yeah, yeah. D definitely Faceless is a nice card. You can copy... Uh, Torison, you can copy even a Sludge Belcher or all the key cards. Uh, but um, right now, Forsen is doing pretty good. Uh, he has that Spider to Shredder. Uh, he still has Blast Mage and a couple of good cards to, to Snowball. But then uh, Nairia just swiping. This will be very important what the minion it is. It needs to be like a free 2. Oh, this is good. Even better. It's good for but Nairia. Yeah, but at least, uh, you know what, at least force it, he was able to get rid of this zombie chow, and he was kind of able to somewhat bypass it. The zombie chow didn't get too much value, and now uh, force it can throw out his weaker creatures. Yeah, like, look at the faceless value right now. Would you faceless? Oh. One of the cog masters? It oh, can fix certain. anything! Can it fix the board state? You know, it's the cog master, he says, I can fix anything. But how often does he actually fix stuff? He's not an upgraded repair bot. Yeah, he's mostly trying to fix your opponent's face. But um, most of the time it works. Like, look at this. He tried look to fix this. the armor. Well, there's going to be a top deck swipe. Oh, unfortunately not. The Wildgrove. So, yeah, like, not much to do here. Um, faceless, not really great, but might be a necessity uh, to put a 4-4 on the board. So, Nairia is going, um, going for Wildgrove. Do you attack with the with the Shade to get rid of the mech? I think you do. Um, killing a mech is always good. Well, all right, not always, but versus mech mage, you want to clear mechs uh, to deny the, the mech synergies. And in this case, he kind of denied the, the Blast Mage. Yeah, exactly. This turn, at least. Yeah, two, two Mad Scientists in Forrestan's hand right now. It's kind of good, but at the same time, kind of awkward, because you're really, uh, you probably really don't want to see both of them at the same time, because it, it's possible for your opponent to kill off both of them on the same turn, and then proc Mirror Entity, so you don't get as much value. True. But here, the game is uh, really close to being over. Uh, there are no taunts for Nairia. Forsen decides to trade uh, and get that mirror entity, which is actually a, a great move. Um, getting Nairia to 6, not really a way to come back from the situation with a full board. No swipe, no clear. Um, but this is a really bad matchup to begin with. Yeah, exactly. And it, it was exactly what Forsen was targeting. So again... Uh, Forsen, even though he starts off with the series pretty uh, poorly uh, with O2, I think it's very possible for Forsen to come back now. And he's going to be able to take this game, and he's going to be left with Mech Shaman and Zu against Druid. And even though both of those decks are slightly worse against Druid, he's still going to be in a very advantageous position. Oh, yeah. All right. So game number three is over. Forsen is taking game. Uh, he's taking the win here. 2-1 uh, uh, for Nairia still. And no old Forsen boys. So Forsen is fighting back. Can Nairia win with the Druid at least one game? Yeah. Now you say like oh Forsen boys, but it's that's not exactly true because it's not like Forsen always does so poorly in tournaments. It's more that he's kind of inconsistent in the sense that he either goes uh oh four or he goes four oh in tournaments. For example, at the Gfinity uh, uh, Spring Tournament number one, Spring Masters Tournament, he actually just uh, went 6-0 against his group in the group stage. Pretty great start, I would say, from Forsen. So maybe just a little inconsistent, maybe a little streaky player, but certainly not a bad one. Oh, yeah. And um, the 4 4 means that he's going for the risky strategies. And uh, if he hits the strategy, if he hits the sweet spot, he is getting there. Um, definitely an excellent player. That's why we, we invited Forsen. Like, it's always a pleasure to watch uh, what he's bringing. 
And right now he's bringing a very intricate and interesting deck that requires a lot of skill, which is uh, a zoo. <laughs> well, you, you say that kind of facetiously, but zoo is regarded by many players as one of the decks that requires the most skill. In fact, Strife Crow most famously said, you know, I, I think I play most decks perfectly, but with Zoo, I'm never sure. But you know what you can be sure about? Uh, innervating, coining, a Keeper of the Grove on turn one. And this is kind of like the the blowout play in this matchup, at least. Yeah, because you not only heal the, the one drop, you can also counter whatever happens. He still has the Wrath on turn two. He can even play that BGH. Oh, he has the Shade on turn three. So an amazing opening for Nyria. Even though Zoo is favored in this matchup, with this hand, it will be tough. Like, Forsen is already fighting an uphill battle here. Exactly. Uh, Knife Struggler, at least, it's something. But Nerea has the Wrath to get rid of it. And then he has the, the Keeper follow-up uh, for the Nerubian Egg. So pretty much all the answers for Forsen, or for Nerea right now. And it will be up to Forsen, really, to... Um, get a really good implosion here and for Naria not to draw into a swipe. That's pretty imagine, much what what he needs. Imagine if there would not be... Like, if Naria decides to play the Shade, oh my god, he actually goes for the Shade. Yeah, he might get punished here because if implosion rolls pretty high and then... Um, the knives kill the knives, everything Yeah, the knives else. can kill the Shade. Yeah, it could just be just devastating for Naria. Yeah, this looks like a setup turn, but then the Forsen didn't really set anything up. He just played the cards in his hand. So I, well, honestly, I want to see the shade here, but unfortunately, Naria reads this. I, I wanted to, to see the shade because I wanted to see those orange knives flying. You know, they are yeah. they are fun to watch. I, I really I, like the, I really like this play because it, you're 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 kind of in such a good position right now that you kind of want to be a little safer. Yeah, it wasn't the correct the correct one, especially like on turn four. And you know that Zoo is running double implosion. Like this card is so good. Oh, Bane of Doom. That can oh, be Bane another of Doom is one. interesting. It can bring Melganis. Yeah, but you're not too sad about if Melganis comes on the field. You can always like faceless it and then BGH it the following turn. All right. So what do you do now? Um, just uh, playing Keeper doesn't seem that great. Is Shade an option? Just bring up Shade, uh, and um... but then again, like you want to play Keeper, kill something, and then next turn maybe play Shade and Shapeshift. Yeah, it's just the curve is kind of awkward for Nibiria at this point. Whereas the Zoo player, because he has such a low cost minions in his deck, he's able to curve so much better. Like, this is like the second turn in a row where Nibiria floated one mana. It, like yeah. it's def it, I I would say it's probably the correct play. But Nari is definitely unhappy about it, especially with the opening that he got. And look at this, like, um, with that opening that you mentioned, Nairia doesn't seem to be in a great position here. Uh, with no swipe, it might be really troublesome. Savage Roar, no, that's not what you need. Another floating mana, though. He is going to play that Keeper. Kill the free 2 And I believe attack into the 1-1. He doesn't have to attack into the 1-1 here. He might just kill the the, uh, the juggler and and pass because next turn he will be able to shape shift the one one, or maybe attack the one one with a two four and use the the four four shade to kill the four four Nerubian. Yeah, so that's three turns in a row where Naria floated one mana. Oh, there is a doom guard. That's um, eight points of damage. So it's fifteen points of damage for Forsen. But now it's still a board control battle. So do you go for Defender of Argus or do you go for Implosion? Is there any Bane of Doom, maybe? Yeah, oh. I like Bane of Doom here. All right, is it Illidan? Okay, a little weak. Well, it's a free free, come on. Two points of damage, a free free for five mana. I think it's a fair deal. Obviously, it could have been Morganis or Illidan or Doomguard or Pitlord. Or Infernal. Okay, it's actually a weak demon. Still better than a Void Caller. Huh. So Naria deciding to clear the small demon. That was strange. Uh, 
He could have just hero powered there instead of uh, using up the Savage Roar. I don't think the Savage Roar did very much. Unless I'm missing something. No, I think hero power is fine. Maybe he is actually tired. Or maybe he thinks he has such an advantage that he can do uh, some plays that are making us wonder. You know, just trolling the casters. It's like, oh, I'm do I'm going to do Savage Roar so that Monk actually wonders, why did I do that? <laughs> And yeah, unfortunately, I believe this is game over. Yeah, that's um, 8 points of damage, well, even 9 plus 7, 16 points of damage from Force in this turn. Yeah, so, yeah, unfortunately, Naria, he had the an amazing start, but his follow-ups were just kind of really weak. Yeah, but he, again... He, he floated so much mana. He pretty much floated mana, like, every single turn. Yeah. And... He, there's like pretty much like he made the I believe the correct turns mostly for the most part every single turn But it just wasn't enough uh, force and straw just made Aria very awkward There wasn't a different line of play where he would just uh, coin the raft to kill the the flame imp and Then innervate keeper on two would that change things? Yeah, not I, really I, I think yeah. I agree, but you know what right. I think this uh, out of all three uh Matchups. This might be the best for Druid, perhaps. And wow, Naria for the third game in a row, he gets the faceless. Just like kind of a dead card in this matchup. Exactly what you don't want. Yeah, I agree. All right, but this is it, guys. This is game number five. The winner advances to tomorrow. The loser goes home. Forsen versus Naria. Mech Shaman versus Druid. Who is going to take it? Who has an Who has an edge? Is it like all right? You said this is the better matchup for Druid out of all three that Forsen brought, but it's still a bad matchup, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, it, it doesn't have mirror entities, but just mechs are so hard for Druid to deal with because you don't have, like, all the AoEs in your in deck. Like, you basically have two swipes, and if you don't draw to, to the, your swipes, then you're going to be very sad. All right, and there is no swipe for Nairia now, so he's definitely sad. He looks sad. Like, look at his face. Like, he's just... Fa Facing his monitor. Alright, Walled Growth isn't a bad draw here. He's gonna be able to curve out into the Emperor. And, uh, he's gonna be. And you know what? Next turn, he has, even has the BGH in order to deal with the Fell Reaver. Yeah. So, definitely uh, winnable. But definitely very win winnable for Forsen. Or rather, for Naria. Alright, and Forsen is going for that 8 8 Fell Reaver for full mana. <laughs> The BM from Nyria, he has that BGH. Yeah, he has the BGH, and now this is a good Savage War turn. A uh, great sequencing for Nyria, just using a Savage War before the BGH in order to burn some more cards. I've got the beast in my side. You also get this third part. Uh, second Fell Reaver, even. Burns Ragnaros, burns. There, so, no Whirling Zappomatics. So, yeah, I would say uh, it's certainly winnable for Nyria at this point. Yeah, he got a taunt. Um, he will be able to use Shapeshift next turn, so even though Forsen has some kind of board, it is... Uh, Nairia has a chance, like before it looked really grim. Yeah, that BGH swing was exactly what Nairia needed, but he's still in a fairly tenuous position. There's quite a lot of bursts in Forsen's hand. Um, so he goes for... So Nairia goes for the Emperor Thor's end play. Hopefully... This uh, Emperor Thorzane reads Taunt on it. Hopefully, Forsen will be uh, will think that he has to kill it. Well, Fire Elemental. Uh, well, if Forsen with this burst, I don't. Th he actually goes for the for the kill here. Thorzane was nice because next turn he will be able to play um, two Taunts. Yeah, two Druids of the Claw here. Uh, in fact, actually, two, uh, three Druids of the Claw. Three Druids of the Claw. In Aria's hand currently. But maybe the question is, do you uh, faceless the Druid of the Claw, or do you faceless the Fire Elemental? The Fire Elemental is a little stronger, but you might be scared of dying at this point. So if you faceless the Fire Elemental, you get a 4-6 that's going to die to Fire Elemental, and then um, free damage to face from the mech, yeah, and there's I, 13 points of damage that you can take. Yeah, I like this a little better because uh, it allows you to... You have the Keeper follow-up. Oh wow, even reversing switch this. I thought he was going to reversing switch the, uh, the totem the totem, and just kill it instantly. 
But yeah, this makes quite a bit of sense. Uh, changing the Fire Elemental to a 5-6 so we just can't get a free Druid of the Claw kill. Alright, Forsen needs to Crackle 6 on a, one of the Druids of the Claw, I believe. He has a spell damage. Is that a 6? Or a 4? Are we crossing his fingers? Oh, oh no! Man. Forsen unsatisfied with that. Yeah, that means he's Forsen's gonna have to give up his Rock Biter and take 4 extra damage to the face. Yeah, this is so weird. Like, he has to also spend both minions on the other one. Yeah, exactly. Like, how do you kill the other Druid of the Claw? Oh, he's just gonna freeze it here. But just that buys... Just time. Yeah, that buys Naria a lot of time. Yeah, Naria is still, like, fine on 16 points of health. Third Druid of the Claw coming down. Yeah, he's gonna... Yeah, charge is... Uh, I like charge here. Just Killing the, the board Master as well. This and is looking good for Nyria. He basically stopped Forsen. Forsen needs something big. Is Flametong the big card? It's not big, but it's certainly very useful here. Alright, saving the healing totem. Uh, because I believe he's going to attack into the 4-1. Or do you go for face? No, I believe you do kill the 4-1 the here. Oh no, what a bad totem for Forsen. He definitely wanted that... Uh, the, the taunt totem here. But then, do you agree with positioning? Like, if the if Flamethong... Well, Flamethong was certainly going to die, and he wanted the healing totem, so I, I guess it's fine. Yeah, N not like the best positioning, but I think he was forced into that positioning. Yep, Forsen was definitely forced there. Um, a Taunt totem, nice. Very nice for Forsen here. And now a swipe would be... interesting. Oh! <laughs> this is so bad for Naria. Yeah. Oh man. On the bottom deck Ciao. here. And now, Forsen is just uh, four points away from finishing the game up. Or five points because this Fire Lentil is a 5 2, right? Yeah. And Neutron is not a great card. It's, it's alright. It's alright. It's a taunt. And uh, it allows. But he's looking for burst, right? Like, he wants yeah. the. Um, I guess he has the burst with the Neutron. If Neutron is not answered. He will be one damage of lethal, or two damage though, with the shape shift. So, is this over? Uh, no, he's one damage of lethal, I believe. All right. No, he's not. No. Yeah, he is. Okay. Yet again, and oh, unfortunately, that's not it. But you know what? I think Forsen still has this in the bag. What one card can Naria draw that puts him back into this game? Well, even Deathwing is not really saving him because then there will be a minion from Pilot of Shredder. So he needs a Deathwing and a Deathwing hitting like something like a Pilot, to, uh, like a Flame Song Totem. I think that's okay. it. Like, there is no way to win with Force Nature and no way to survive with Force Nature unless there is a Doomsayer. So. Wait, wait a minute. Uh, he can get like. Oh! Oh, wow. All okay. Right, that, that's a great one. He can follow up with Force of Nature, somewhat clear the board, and... Yeah, this wow. is exciting. He's still playing not to die, right? It's... I, I can't believe that he will be able to stabilize. Force is just smiling at this. He's, Force is he's like, oh, wait, are you actually coming back from one health? <laughs> Force is shaking his head. It's like, seriously? Force and please. Nairia just counting damage. Using the tools. So what can Forsen draw? I think there's around like 12 to 14 cards that are lethal. Well, he's already used one. Uh, he, he can either draw a Fire Elemental, his second Crackle, his second Fire Elemental, or um, a Lava Burst. Earthshock is lethal as well. That's true. Dr. Boom is lethal, oh, kind wow. of. Okay. <laughs> you know what BGH has been used? Oh, actually, I, was yeah, BGH used this game? It's no, wait. Used, yeah. uh, not this game. Or was this? Yeah, Phil Reaver. It was a Phil Reaver. And look at that. Look at Forsen with Double his signature innervate. BM. Double Innervate. Uh, great cards in this matchup, but unfortunately, a bit late. So he has to hope for Doomsayer, hope that both these bombs hit the Anotron for one. one. <laughs> but that's unfortunately not going to happen, and Forsen's plan prevails. He brought three decks to snipe Druid, and he sniped Druid quite effectively, I would have to say.
Yeah, with the bomb till the end. So Forsen is going to take the match and advance to tomorrow. He can chill today and prepare. Oh man, what a match. It's like Neria was winning 2-2-0 and then we were laughing. Yeah, oh Forsen. And uh, Forsen did what you said. Like basically he was targeting the Druid and Druid never won a game. Is Druid that bad or did Forsen really prepare a great matchup, um, you know, great lineup against the Druid? Yeah, I don't think Druid is bad at all in this uh in this format in this metagame but uh fortunately for, for forsen he had exactly what he needed um forsen targeted the druid not that popular in lineups these days i think uh warlock and uh warrior are the most popular yep. decks in the format but there's still going to be i would suspect at least half the players in this tournament would be bringing druid so definitely a, a strong lineup for forsen all right, so this will wrap up uh, match number one. Uh, right now we are going for a short break, guys, but then don't go anywhere. We're going to continue with the matches. We have seven more. Wait, how many matches do we have? Seven more matches today, right? Yes. Oh, seven man. whole matches an ex- for you today. An exciting day. Okay, guys, so a short break, and after that we're going to come back. <laughs> 